Bordering Targa, Newfoundland on TSN is brought to you by Puma and Quaker State. Hi, I'm Rob Wells. I'm John Paul Tremblay. Over the last 10 years, we've been really busy writing and shooting Trailer Park Boys and a bunch of other projects, and we never got a chance to do something we've always dreamt of doing. Yeah, rally racing, but this year we had a bit of a window, so we contacted that guy from Motorin. What's his, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Brad, isn't it? No, I think it's Brian. Brian Dime, big fan of his. Huge fans. Anyway, we told him we wanted to race the Target Newfoundland, wanted to see what he could do, if he could set it up, and he did a good job, he set everything up. Somehow he pulled it all together, he got us a brand new Porsche Cayman S, it's crazy fast, handles like it's on rails. And so we're gonna hit the rock, 2,000 grueling kilometers of no sleep, unfortunately no drinking, they have breathalyzers, just a lot of racing. Friends and family think we're a little nuts. A couple of them said, you know, they're scared we might even die. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not gonna happen. So I hope you already went to the liquor store because you're about to join us for the next hour on the rock. Got a feeling it's gonna get pretty crazy. This is a fantastic event. There's only three targets in the world as far as I know of. There's uh, one in Australia and Tasmania and one in New Zealand and this one. If you make a mistake here, you can end up in the ditch or in the trees or in the rocks. People come from all over the world to race here. Everybody's really nice, buddy. They all talk to you like that and say, have you seen a moose yet, buddy? It's the strangest thing. By the side of a little country road in Newfoundland, nothing around, and then all of a sudden, zoom, car goes by in a blur. Get drunk, man. The best place to go is Shamrock City down there. Right Shamrock City? Yes. Really? Best place to go. Nice. Now we're racing in the Targa Newfoundland. It's going to be interesting. That's definitely yeah. I'm a very big fan of you guys. Cool, man. Oh, man. I love your shows. <laughs> Squeeze together. The best pub yeah. in town is the ship. The ship? ship yeah. You want to go to the ship? Yeah, that's way up. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. That's a really good one. There's but anything on George, cheap. you guys will have a good yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Um, as soon as we get out of the, the car at six, we should probably have a cooler ready, have a few beer, stop drinking at 10, go over some shit, and uh, be in bed by 11. Are you okay? Have you been drinking tonight? Yes. I'm going to be okay because I'm going to shut it down pretty soon. But uh, for the rest of the race, no liquor. And uh, are you going to set an alarm to wake up? Tomorrow? I don't need it. I do not need, need an alarm to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. Easy. Yeah, he said seven. It's uh, well, it's seven fifty-one. So we're close. I'm starting to think that JP's not taking this serious enough. First day of school, we're late. He was at way too late last night. Did you fall back asleep, man? Oh, man. <laughs> He's getting some f***ing clothes on. Good morning, man. Good morning. How you feeling? Great. You ready for school? It starts Yeah, in, uh... I gotta have a shower, though, okay? I don't think we have time for showers. We're late. We're not late. It's like 10 to 9. 8. Registration's at 8.
The important thing during this school is that you work together as a team. Driver and navigator work together. Okay, so when the navigation uh, training is going on, the drivers can't go to sleep. Drivers have to pay attention. It's very, very important. Same with the navigators. When we're talking about driving skills, it's worthwhile listening. This is Andy Proudfoot. Uh, Andy's also going to help out. Uh, Andy is going to teach you the navigation side. Uh, I'm a driver, so I don't know a lot about navigation. I know what I like to hear, and I know like, how I'd like it to work. Today we're running the Targa School. It's for uh, new competitors and old competitors to help them become safe and to become fast on the stages. It's very important that they take a school like this so that they can understand the event. So when they go in, it's not like deer in the headlights. Uh, an event like this is very challenging. And it's important for them to have the most information possible going in. After a while, you realize that that right seat is what allows you to go fast. We'll give you an introduction to reading the root book so you can understand what all those symbols and diagrams and numbers mean. Introduction to reading the tulip diagrams and how to correct your odometer. Does everybody have a rally computer of some sort, function, or type? No? no? You're just going to use the odometer in the car? <laughs> There's uh, definitely a lot to know. Not so much for you, I guess. You just got to drive. Well, I got to know what you, you, you know. I gotta know what you're doing. We don't have a, an onboard rally computer. Which they highly recommend, and we don't have one of those. We're not gonna do that. They highly recommended having uh, intercom, we don't have that. No. Um, rain suits <laughs> and stuff like that, I don't see why we need rain suit reflectors. Fire extinguisher. Fire, do we have a fire extinguisher? I hope so, we need one. Do you feel more confident, or how do you feel? I feel, uh, oh, I'm still feeling pretty confident. I mean, I, a lot of that stuff just went in one ear and out the other, and I'm just going to drive and basically let him handle all that technical shit and uh, just turn when he tells me to turn. <laughs> uh, Nabby? Nabby, Nab? Uh, left. <laughs> the navigator's really the brains of the operation, and um, you need to be, keep everything in check, you need to keep your driver in check, and be constantly focused on what you're doing. There's no time to sightsee and chat and that sort of thing. You need to, to stay on top of things at all times. Just keeping yourself busy on your phone. <laughs> uh, they've certainly got a capable car and they seem interested in the school and if they pay attention to what I've been teaching them and do as they're told, they certainly could do very well. You know, Rob's been working hard with the numbers, so um, we're gonna see how it goes and if uh, things go to hell, first few days and we're just going to say the heck with it and, and start driving a little faster and not worrying about the times as much. The car is a 2010 Porsche Cayman S and uh, with the new uh, PDK transmission. Uh, our car is uh, 320 horsepower mid-engine. Um, it's a new Cayman model so it's uh, built on a boxer platform. Okay guys, a few things you gotta remember. They're gonna do a uh, breathalyzer test every morning at seven o'clock, and Rob, I'm afraid that's for the uh, Navigator 2. We've got a couple of hours now to, uh, to get at it and really get to work and uh, check out the car on the racetrack and uh, work on some of the physics and uh, geometry of the, a basic corner, so hopefully you guys will uh, end up uh, bringing the car home in one piece and yourself. We under, underplay the amount of uh, importance we, we use the uh, throttle to steer with. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it really is important. Mm -hmm. And if you've driven in a Canadian winter, you steer with the gas oh, yeah, pedal. Totally. But now I'm not talking about sliding the car mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. Even at slow speeds, when you decelerate, the car will turn tighter. And when you accelerate, it'll turn wider. Now, that's good in, in a number of ways. And, and probably the most productive way is that it makes a very minor steering adjustment. Mm -hmm. And that requires you to be looking a long way ahead. He's got a real good attitude, and he's uh, listening well, and, uh, and he's come a long way in the in a, you know, short time we spent here today. He's, uh, he's a much better driver for, than when he got here. So. It was good to have everybody here for the support because uh, they all know that this is a dream of mine and, and Rob's, and, and uh, it's going to happen. I grew up in Newfoundland, and uh, 
I've seen film of the Targa race itself, and I've traveled most of those roads myself over the years. And I must say, my first reaction when uh, I heard he was going to go in the race was, is he f crazy? And uh, then I thought, well, he's a pretty good driver, so, you know, maybe that's not a problem. And then I found out, well, he's not going to be driving. JP's going to be driving. And then I figured, well, maybe he really is crazy. But uh, no, actually, I think JP is a good driver. We're, we're a little concerned. We, as parents, I guess we, that's natural. But... Uh, I'm pretty sure things will work out well. In this process for driving, um, you got to try to make Rob all has all been through a tragedy of losing his brother in a car crash, so I know he's got thoughts on that too. They've picked a great province. I'm from Newfoundland. The scenery is going to be amazing. Uh, I just, yeah, I just, I just hope they have a wonderful, wonderful experience. I think he'll do fine, and with Rob's help. All I say to them when they get in a car to go traveling anywhere, don't forget to bless yourself. <laughs> so every time they take off on a trip, I'd say that to them. But no, they'll be fine. Okay, no brakes. Okay, off the brakes, turn. Major pressure because, I mean, you know, if I got in the car and, and I didn't drive, uh, well, if I drove poorly, Rick probably would have said, okay, what the hell are we doing? Let's just shut this down. But. I, I felt pretty good in it, and um, every lap uh, we were going faster. He was tweaking uh, every turn that I was going into, so I'm, I'm feeling much more confident now. It was a riot. I, I loved it. Six days for the camera. How was it? Oh, it was incredible. I loved it. Rick's a great teacher. Like it's just the uh, little tips, giving them all. I've got a major grin here. <laughs> it was, especially for confidence. Like now, I know what the car can take. It was pushed to its maximum limit, and uh, yeah, it definitely feels. I have more confidence now. With JP driving. If I hadn't have done this, and he was going the way he goes, I probably would have been a little scared. But no, now I'm confident, and this is going to be wicked. Stop. Okay, get on the gas on the floor. Go. I'd be much more worried about them had we not. Uh, had this little bit of time to, uh, to work with them, so. Rob was a few years younger than me, so when you're, you know, 10 years old, you don't really hang around with kids that are seven years old. Rob, I can remember, he was the guy that would drive around on this little moped, and I was a bit of a hellion. I always had, like, uh, the motocross bikes and stuff, and I was like, you know, look at this dork on the, on the moped, you know, this big soccer player. I really don't know why I've been with them for so long. They're, they're not that nice, really. They're arrogant, pompous. I don't like them, actually. I don't even know why I'm here. I can remember, you know, Mom and I saying that we'll believe it when, it, when uh, they're in the McLean's magazine. And of course they did that. And uh, it's so, so proud of them. So proud. And uh, whatever they put their mind to, it gets done. I sell life insurance and I told them you guys could probably die, so um, neither of them wanted to even get any life insurance, so I, I think they're screwed really because they're probably going to die and leave no money for nobody and then that's it. So I'm planning on taking a couple of JP's TVs today and some other stereo equipment before he takes off, that way at least I get something. Actually, I'm taking one more thing. I'm taking his video game. He's got this video game that's stand up, has about 100 different old school games on it. It's even got the trackball, like Missile Command and all. I'm taking that. I'm going to load it in my truck right after we're done with this stupid interview. We got the yellow, yellow coil. I think the yeah, first thing we shot was those guys shooting at squirrels with handguns, having a conversation, and uh, I thought it was pretty funny. So tell me about your connection with autism. I actually have a, a cousin that's autistic, and uh, so I met him at a very young age, and so I've been aware of it for, for quite some time now. And, and I guess that's part of it, just getting the awareness out there, especially for uh, some of the smaller communities to see what devices are available to them through the society. And yeah, it's just a, it's just a great cause overall. What would you like? I'm fine. I already ate breakfast. Can you do that? Yeah. Are you going to have a banana pumpkin bread?
You tell me. We're really oh, happy cool. that the Trailer Park you, boys are on side with us uh, in support of the Autism Society. And that's a huge thing for us. We've never had anything like that before. First of all, I have to say they're totally different than I thought they were going to be. Uh, having seen Trailer Park boys, they're very calm, very collect, very social, very personable. Five bucks. Unbelievable. What they're doing, I can't put into words, it's huge. Um, right. The awareness alone, but hopefully the funds that will come as a result will be very helpful to us. Here you go, brother. Thank you. Cheers. Sure, man. That was deadly. Like, that's wicked. That's, I watch them on TV like all the time. That's sick. I got to meet the Trailer Park Boys. I'm the number one fan of, fan of the Trailer Park Boys. I got Trailer Park Boys stuff all over my room. I even got shirts hanging from my ceiling. You know what? He's not as dumb as he looks, eh? No, no. It's a nice car. It's too bad we can't go for a drive. <laughs> It'd be fun. Well, I have an autistic cousin. That's why it's a perfect charity for us. And he came by yesterday with his mom and dad and got to sit in our car and hang out for a bit. He doesn't talk, so it's hard to, to find out what he's really thinking, but he seemed to be having a good time, lots of smiles, and got some pictures taken, so. It was, it was meant a lot to me. I haven't seen him in a long, long time, so it was great. How are you, uh, how are you doing with your road sheets? I'm getting there, I gotta, I'm gonna be up for a while, yeah. Can we help you? No, oh, we can help you, you know. Uh, I mean, there's little things, time. the problem with me is that I'm, I'm kinda anal with that. Like, then I'd be afraid that if there was something wrong. Like, at least if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. But no, I hate, like, okay, you can blame us, I don't care. No, yeah. no, I just don't wanna go through it. I know what I'm like, and I'll probably end up just going through and checking it all again. And okay. But, I think Rob has the toughest job, because um, just watching footage of the people that have been in this race, the navigator is just, uh, I mean, he's staring down at his crotch, telling you to turn like every few seconds. And uh, ultimately, if he doesn't, uh, if he's not prepared, uh, we could crash. <laughs> so I think he's got more of, uh, he's got a tougher job than I do for sure. Well, there's a couple sections more where there's one section in particular, there's, a, there's like a hairpin left, a 90 right, then a 90 left, then over a bridge, and then immediately hairpin left. Like, it's just with all within. I mean, it's probably very obvious, but on paper it looks like yeah. it's <laughs> I don't like to put the pressure on anybody to win at all costs, and I don't, uh, but they we're all, let's face it, we're all success-oriented, and the better we do, the better time we're going to have. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it's, uh, I think we're all the same, that, that same mind, so. Yeah. And this is really about, you know, the whole process about concentration, budgeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to stay focused, and you're, you're both doing an excellent job at it. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. We're giving it 100 percent, so yeah, 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 I know that, and it's, uh, it's quite refreshing to see. Now we're off the liquor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, that's really yeah, important. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Drivers and co-drivers. Drivers and co-drivers. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Here you go, Paul. Okay. Zelda on that one. Wait, hang up. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on! Okay. We saved you a break today. <laughs> oh, that was a short one. Low interruption, what does that mean? Oh, you got to do it again. You're just not Rob? blowing good. Excuse I knew me. you were going to do this to us. Rob, did you blow? You didn't blow long enough. I can't remember, did I? <laughs> no. Oh, pretty. Okay. Here you go. Okay. Please. Analyze it. Ah, thank you. Oh, he passed! He passed! See? Okay. Originally, when we came here, we thought when you blew breathalyzer in the morning, it was like 0 .08. It's actually 0, .00, so there's, uh, yeah, there's no leeway there. So if we're going to do any drinking, it'll probably have to be at the end of the week. It's hard to come to Newfoundland and not drink, but we'll get through it, I guess. Good luck, you guys. Great to be back on My advice would be drive on the side of caution. In this wet road, the speed of this Porsche, the weight of the Porsche, all that has to factor into these, how fast it's going to break, how quickly the corners are coming on them, and all that the driver has to be going through his mind to make sure that he doesn't run off the road. If you go too fast, too quickly, it's going to be all over.
is it. Just want to keep it on the road and try to work on this average speed bullshit stuff. It's that's going to be the tough part. So we're going to try to keep her slow and see what happens halfway through. See where we're at and hopefully want it to slow down to 40 kilometers an hour. A few little butterflies. We found in the driver's meeting that we're in what's called the Grand Touring class, not the Tiger class, which is totally different. It, uh, it involves time stages where you have to basically complete a stage in a certain amount of time, not too fast or too slow, or you get points deducted. The Tiger class, you get to go as fast as you possibly can, and that's what JP was hoping we were in. And It's going to be tough for him to be in Grand Touring because I know what he's like, and it's going to be really hard for him to keep uh, his speeds down. So we'll see what happens. Slow down through the turns, a little, maybe. It's my only advice, really. Make sure you got some gas and a couple of energy bars, I guess. And, you know, stop and take pee breaks every once in a while, or else you just pit pants in a Porsche. Uh, the only piece of advice I could probably give them, they wouldn't listen to me anyway, would just be to call it off. Anything else I didn't ask you? Yeah, no, I think they're going to crash, and I said that, so... No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Okay, give her now. Awesome. Right. How are you doing? Hey, Great Captain. Job. Oh, thank you. Hey, thanks for bringing it back in one piece. Nice, yes. We hey. did. He did good. I just uh, checked the results out. You guys aced that. You, we... you told you guys were right on. Oh, for real? Right cool. Aced the whole thing? Well, yeah. You aced everything else. So you oh, nice. tied to the lead along with eight other guys. Nice. Okay. okay. So cool. it's, it's kind of shocking. <laughs> It's all part of life, you know, it's all part of uh, what happened tonight, you know, I've seen thousands of them, been involved probably a hundred, and um, it's, uh, you know, the old red mist comes down over the ice and it's so, uh, it's so easy to happen, people don't realize just how close to disaster they are at any given moment, and it's just in a heartbeat, it can all be gone, and particularly in an event like this, where the roads are up and down and it really, the surface is not constant, it's variable and uh, you go up over top of a crest and there's gravel on the road and you end up sliding into, into something solid, you know, as happened today. Yeah, you got it tuned up pretty good. Yeah, she's yeah. tuned up good, buddy. Yeah. Dual carburetor. Yeah, dual carbs on her there. Yeah. and are they? Air filters on her. Yeah. 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 yeah, Weber downdrafts on her there, buddy, yeah. <laughs> Weber down drafts? Yeah, those are the Weber down drafts. So that's not what she comes with, though, no. Well, if it doesn't start, it won't go very far, JP. You know? Yeah, well, the, th the three of us, uh, you know, sort of share the the love for cars. Those d just didn't invite me to come to this thing, so I'm not going, so. What are your thoughts on what they're doing? No, I'm just joking. Um, I think it's great. I, I'm, I've been trying to talk them out of doing it because I think they're going to crash. I think it's going to be really bad. I think it's going to be a horrendous uh, finish to this thing. I don't think they'll make it more than two days, to be honest. 
you know, and I re I don't want them to crash, you know, because I want to uh, keep making TV shows and stuff. It's more about me. Definitely, you know, it's a very selfish uh, reason that I don't want them to do it. It has nothing to do with, you know, whether they have fun or not. I, it's going to affect me, and that's mainly what I'm concerned about. <laughs> Yeah, man. Taping us while we're eating. This is very exciting. We're having our breakfast. first got to the race, um, there was a lot of racers around and, and they, uh, I think a lot of them actually believed that were these knuckleheads that we play on TV and that we weren't going to take this seriously. We'd be out partying all night, perhaps even drinking while we're racing. But um, Rob and I came in to this race wanting to, you know, compete and to do well. So. So I didn't really know how I felt about it. Uh, we saw some of the episodes and that, and um, it was the thing that kept his father going uh, through his illness and that. He just loved all the, the advertisements, all the things that would come out in the newspaper about the Trailer Park Boys and that. And it just kept him living a little longer. They've always supported me with, with everything that I've wanted to do. So they... they I'm not. They, I'm not sure whether they really liked it at first, or there was. They, they were worried about relatives. What, what are they going? What are they going to think about John Paul now? He's swearing. He's drinking, selling drugs and stuff on television. People say to me all the time, "You must be so proud of your son. You know, he's an actor, and they've made it big." And I always come back and say, "I've always been proud of him. He's a wonderful son, and I love him." To Jennifer, to Jennifer and Courtney. And <laughs> and Adam, and who else now? <laughs> I, love I love him, he's my idol. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you going to get a picture of you? There's Bubba Zach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he just got f ourselves. <laughs> Thank you. 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 <laughs> He's the only person that can tell us to go f ourselves. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm fine me? with that. <laughs> you Up until that point, we had perfect times, zeros right across the board. And I thought we really had a shot at maybe winning this thing. And then we hit Gander. It was the first stage that was through a town, and there was a lot of people standing around. And JP, normally when he starts each stage, this Porsche came in us as what's called launch mode, where you put your uh, both feet to the <laughs> the floor, brake and gas, and then the car launches itself. It's a real crowd pleaser. And in Gander, every other stage he let off. Once he did launch mode, press the crowd, he'd just slow down, and we'd, we'd do our rally. In Gander, he just never let up, and uh, we launched around the entire race course. Major penalties. Left, left, left. <laughs> But it, it was the most fun we had up until that point. I, and and bro, yes. I, I, you know, I felt bad because I mean, he spent all night, at least three hours a night, working on these, you know, crunching <laughs> numbers, <laughs> getting our time set up for the next day. I got it right. And he was exhausted. I but I mean, there's only so much you can take. You're in a, you're in a town with 
lots of people watching. Like, how can you drive around in a Cayman S, you know, doing an average speed of what? What was that day? Like 55 or something through a town? You know, 60 or 70. 60 or 7, but still. Obviously too slow for JP. When he's in a race car, he wants to go fast, and we were in a race car. Common sense. That's what you want to do, man. the car not a mark on it anywhere not even underneath there isn't even a twig or a blade of grass stuck under this car anyways the guys are doing a fantastic job uh, it's great when you can take the wheels off a race car and not find a single problem after two days of racing All these cars. They're cool. Yeah, it's all right. This is the nicest one, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you did an a good job driving yesterday. Oh, too. thanks. Hey, Speedy. Hey, let's go, Rick. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna turn this negative into a positive. I think, uh, yeah, somebody must probably somebody sitting in a living room, the top watch, watching yeah, guys go by. Right? Exactly. So uh, I haven't talked to the organizer yet. They'll likely tell us now whether there was an ITC or not. But. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things. You finally got to drive the car like you wanted to. And, um, yeah, we got a 45 second penalty for speeding. Well, hopefully, hopefully we can make it up. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, they're okay. She's okay? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Well. <laughs> Safety equipment did its job. It certainly did. Yes. 42. Hey, it'll be a number we'll remember, I'm sure. of the, uh, the target race was in Greenspawn, which uh, I've got some friends and family there. My mom spent some time there when she was young, and uh, I've been there quite a few times. It's just a beautiful, beautiful spot, and I hadn't been there in years. I think 97 was the last time, come home year. And it was extra special to get back there and relive some of the memories of my childhood, especially with my brother who passed away. I never did meet his brother. Uh, I only met uh, Rob for the first time when he came down with his mom for come home year. His cousin, um, Mike, mentioned, you know, your mom got a bench uh, with uh, a plaque on it in remembrance to your brother down overlooking Warren Gulch. And from his reaction, he did not know that. And he said, that's not true. And I said, yeah, I got to come back. I got to come back. And I'll be back next year. I did not get a chance to go see the uh, the bench that's there, dedication to his memory and my grandfather's memory. Next time, I'm hoping next summer I get some time to finally come down and go see the famous Roaring Gulch and the uh, the bench. I've never seen anything like that. The crowds that were around in the stadiums, Targo attracts quite a large crowd anyway, especially in places like Marystown and Clarenville where you have the stage that goes through town and then 
all the crowds come out to see the stage and then they all go immediately to the arena. Uh, but this year was different and it's still at nine o'clock at night, the arenas were still full of people waiting to meet Rob and JP. Hold on a second, we got, some, we got some characters. So. I watch your show every, every day. Awesome, man. I got my own bubble glasses and everything. Oh, right on. Let me shake your hand. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Should we move up there or what? I don't know. No, no, we can get by. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, yeah. 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 We definitely uh, got nailed with a bit of a penalty. We found it in the morning, so we, we're still going to try, try to get back into the thing. And then last night, Mr. Gas Pedal here went a little nuts again, and we got issued some major penalties actually today, about two minutes. So we're basically out of the race, and now I guess we're just going to have some fun and start practicing for the real Targa race next year. Three, two. It's not about winning to me, it's just about finishing the race, I guess, more than anything, and trying to keep the car on the road. And, I mean, it'd be nice to finish in the top, let's say, 10, but it's our first time. I just want to finish the race and complete it. That's my goal, I guess. So we what? What should we do? What should we do? Just like, uh, go slow. I don't know, man. Let's give her hell for a bit. I mean, I'd like to finish respectfully I guess or respectively what the hell is the word Jeez, I'm, I'm Ricky right now I'm driving a 1965 Ford uh, Falcon I'm driving it with Murray Smith I'm Bill Shanahan we're from uh, Connecticut and we're here because we like the event this is our third year The combined age is like 145 between the two of us. We're both over 70. If we manage the next three stages uh, without um, any penalties, we'll be on our third year on, um, on a plate. So we'll be very happy about that. Talk to us at the end, and we'll be with the trailer boys at the end, in the park. Fantastic. It was a great day. Um, it started off with, uh, we found out just like we expected, we got heavily penalized for uh, speeding, Mr. Leadfoot. But Stop calling uh, me that, man. No, it's I'm good. It's a good driving. thing. Okay. But because of that, we knew we were basically out of it. So today we, I guess we kind of practiced for uh, next year to actually go in the target class. And we went full out. Navigating was good. The driving was amazing. GP just kicked up. Navigating there, we was were, amazing, man. We were tearing around right. the, the tracks and we had the time of our lives. <laughs> this is what it was all about. This is what we thought we were coming here for. And uh, we may not be too popular with the judges, but we had uh, one of the greatest days of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky, man, you're deadly. You don't even know how famous you are, man, Ricky. I'm your biggest fan, man. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. The amount of the crowds that were around in the stadiums, 
Tiger attracts quite a large crowd anyway, especially in places like Marystown and Clarenville where you have the stage that goes through town and then so it, all the crowds come out to see the stage and then they all go immediately to the arena. Uh, but this year was different in that it's still at 9 o'clock at night, the arenas were still full of people waiting to meet Rob and JP. It was interesting really to see how it, um, the, the number of people that they attracted. I had no idea that they had such a following. We did a short film for the Halifax Film Festival, or Atlantic Film Festival, and we got a great response and we, we were hooked on it. We're like, oh my God, people are actually laughing at the stuff that we created. So that's how it all started. I don't think any of us believed it would actually become this big. We figured maybe a few people would tune in and uh, that would be pretty much it, kind of a culty thing, which it was in the beginning. It started out very culty underground and then just kind of exploded into this mainstream show that it is today. But none of us you know, ever thought it would be quite to this level for sure. When we first started making the show, um, you know, I, I thought it would be, you know, I thought it would do well. I thought people would laugh at it because I thought I found it funny, but I didn't think it would, you know, get as big as it did. Yeah, I won't pass that tomorrow. Thanks, girls. Thank you. Well, it's the final day of the race. We just got our uh, penalties issued to us from yesterday, and we're up to uh, nine minutes. <laughs> but we did have one of the greatest days of our lives, so I guess... We don't care. Yeah, we don't care. So we're just, we're considering this training for next year for the Targa. But it's still a little ludicrous. <laughs> It is. So today we're going to try to get more penalty minutes and try to beat that, I guess, today. Try to get some target times today. Yeah. If we don't get thrown out. So we don't give a f what time today, right? No. Can't do that. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go! I know their show, and uh, and they seem to be very serious about racing. They're very competitive. They seem actually more serious about racing this week than they probably are, but with their day job. Uh, I think they're doing a great job, and I I think that you'll probably see that the bugs in them, and they'll probably be back next year. And I really got to commend them on uh, their charity work too with the autism. That's uh, that's wonderful to see that someone's not only coming out here for fun, but they're also having someone else win by uh, the efforts that they're putting forward. I had my doubts in the beginning. I thought it would be very fast off the pace and early to retire. But I have to commend the guys that listened to uh, advice. They heeded it and they drove an extremely mature drive. The driving that I saw, the times that I saw it, was actually impressed me. And the guy that does the driving, you know, he's a natural. If he wasn't capable of driving, he wouldn't have finished the event. Is that our time? Uh, is that our time? Okay, thank you. Motoring Targa Newfoundland on TSN has been brought to you by Puma and Quaker State. Two with the only, the Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> Rob Wells and Jason Chumley, I tell you, these guys are a group. Right on, man. Congratulations, I can't put it on. I was quite surprised by how well the boys caught on to this, and without any very little previous automotive experience, they uh, they both jumped right into it and uh, were, you know, from my point of view, were fabulous students and really really worked at it and, and pulled it off. Fantastic! I'm not sure how we deserve this, but I'm happy to have one. Feels good. I can't wait to have a few drinks and eat. We also can't wait to next year and do this properly. Yeah, exactly. Photo of the boys here.
All in all, it was just a fantastic uh, experience for me. It was a wonderful adventure. Nice. Don't, don't hurt the car, man. <laughs> they brought the car back safe. You know, without a scratch on it, I would think, other than people climbing over. <laughs> and, um, I mean, that in itself is a tremendous success. Thanks so much. I'm kind of depressed that it's all over. It's, I mean, it was an amazing experience. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> I've got the sickness, as they say. The car was on the trail, and we watched it drive by, back to Toronto. And it, uh, it was kind of emotional. It was like, man, we spent the last five days driving the hell out of this beautiful car and, and now it's over, we've got to go back home and uh, work. <laughs> I think it was everything we expected and then some. The, the crowds were unbelievable and the people were amazing and, and very kind to us. And the driving was just out of this world. Yeah, that was definitely one of the greatest experiences of my life. Real happy to see you guys back in one piece. I almost sold this stuff, so we'll talk to you later. What an idiot.